and here is uh, Sutcliffe himself. He was famous for having taken their profiles with a pencil, um, oftentimes claiming to have used their shadow. And you'll look that they're not just profiles that are like three quarter profiles, as you can see me now on the image three quartered. All right. These are side profiles in which uh, supposedly he was actually tracing their shadow. And here's some images that he came up with of Joseph Smith. And you will notice something about all of these images. Joseph Smith's nose. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. The nose, the nose of Joseph Smith is. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Midnight Strike Through Mormons. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Dan, the physiognomy man, McKinley. And he actually wants to take back something he said in a live stream recently uh, when we were commenting on the recent daguerreotype that has been found that some people are claiming is indeed a daguerreotype or a photo of the prophet of the restoration, Joseph Smith. Now, the most well-measured article that came out seemed to be actually from Deseret News, who you would think would be the one trying to push this idea that we got a picture of Joseph Smith now, but they simply said, does an image of Joseph Smith exist? Meanwhile, elsewhere in cyberspace, cyberspace, RNS, Religion News Service, is literally saying Mormon founder Joseph Smith's photo discovered by descendant after nearly 180 years, while the Salt Lake Tribune is saying, literally Peggy Fletcher Stack over the Salt Lake Tribune, is saying, at long last, a, a photo of Mormon founder Joseph Smith emerges. But our friend Dan, the physiognomy man, Speed Read Dan, isn't having it. He's been spending all night analyzing this as physiognomists do. And uh, yesterday he finds himself to have been more enthusiastic. I have consulted with a couple of experts as well. And Dan would like to, um, wh what are we going to call this? Renew your vision, uh, follow up your- Follow up, rebuttal. Fo rebuttal to yourself. Okay. Rebuttal to myself. Okay, so, so take it away. So what, so what happened you was, now? you know, we were all caught up in the moment because it was hot off the press. Like it was uh -huh. brand new information. Like we had just seen it and we just decided, okay, we got to do a live stream on this. Okay. And it's exciting hey, news. I was well measured from the beginning, but you know. Yeah, it, it going, was exciting. Going. Like it was something like, you know, we were riled up with our emotions and we thought, oh, like this is so cool. Like this is, this is epic. Like we yeah. finally have like an image or a photo of Joseph Smith. Yeah, okay. But like when I stopped to realize it, like even when I was looking at it like fresh, I even had my doubts. Like I was actually thinking like, uh, well, this guy, like his personality looks a little bit different. And then I actually thought like maybe Joseph Smith was more conscientious. And okay. uh, obviously the man on the right there in the image is a uh, highly, is a relatively conscientious person. Okay. Um, but I just looked back and, you know, in the accounts of Joseph's life was he loved to like be a little kid. He loved playing around. Like he wasn't exactly super orderly or super organized as a person. Okay. And he had a really hard time, you know, keeping records. Like he wasn't anything like a scribe. And... So do you or don't you think now that it is a daguerreotype found in a locket of Joseph Smith a hundred years uh, after after his death? You think it's of him or no? I think it's most likely Samuel Smith. You think it's Samuel Smith. And what I, gives you the idea that it's Samuel Smith? It, well, it looks like Samuel Smith. It looks like the images of Samuel H. Smith. Okay, but if that was so obvious, then why weren't we all saying that yesterday? Well, I thought about it. Okay, I yeah. did say it yesterday. I thought it was a possibility, and now that I'm thinking about him, like, so what's it, led you away from thinking that it's Joseph Smith now? Well, well, a few other reasons. I, I, I also analyzed um, a few of a number of the sketches or images or paintings of Joseph that were done in his lifetime, and they don't look anything like this image. I'm like, how on earth would someone, you know, look at that image on the right and produce, you know, the images that we're going to see, you know, right now? Yeah, so I'm curious to see how this plays out. I called up my boy Reed, all right? and Well, not called him up, but texted him. And I said, hey, so what do you think? And he actually agreed with your renewed perspective that he doesn't think it is, but he actually brought up an interesting point. And I want to make sure that I don't mispronounce this person's name because these historical figures, the way it's written, is oftentimes much different than the way it's pronounced. But... um. He definitely thought that it was somebody associated with the Smith family. 
okay, that it, it, it could be a relative and whatnot. But then he continued to say Sutcliffe Maudsley did a portrait of Joseph Smith in which he literally traced his shadow. Apparently that was, I guess, his uh, form of doing artwork. And so I looked up who is this, you know, Sutcliffe Maudsley. And he actually, it's really impressive. It's on the Sut church's website. Yeah, he has his own entire section at the church's uh, website about his artistic legacy, his early years in England, so on and so forth. And if you actually go to the website, it's really interesting here. You can scroll through his work and this guy loved his profiles. Okay. And a lot of these profiles of very prominent people are, are very ornate, ornate, but what's interesting if you look at them and here is uh, Sutcliffe himself, he was famous for having taken their profiles with a pencil, um, oftentimes claiming to have used their shadow. And you'll look that they're not just profiles that are like three quarter profiles, as you can see me now on the image three quartered. All right. These are side profiles in which uh, supposedly he was actually tracing their shadow. And here's some images that he came up with of Joseph Smith. And you will notice something about all of these images. Joseph Smith's nose. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. The nose, the nose of Joseph Smith is not the same at all of the guy, you know, in the previous image. Yeah. So Joseph Smith knows from hair the side. is different. The face is different. And then here's the other thing, like um, a person with that kind of face in the original Jugario type that we were talking about earlier. Okay. Wouldn't have the body shape that Joseph Smith has. Interesting. So, like, usually someone with that kind of face would usually have more of a skinnier, more of a, maybe a, not quite a pencil, but, like, more straighter. And Joseph Smith's body looks kind of rounded. Um, yes. And his death mask seems like it would kind of insinuate that as well. Like, not just, like, rounded in terms of his face, but, like, his, his back or something. Like, this, this man has hips. <laughs> That's funny. So, anyway, when I look at this image... Okay, I can't help but think, okay, this guy, if he's tracing the shadow of people, okay, that's got to be as accurate, at least anatomically, as it can get for um, an artistic rendition of, of certain parts of your body and to get an idea of what somebody actually looked like. And this is the very famous... Um, side portrait of, I think he was like Lieutenant Colonel at the time of the Nauvoo Legion, but this is when Joseph Smith was uh, head of the Nauvoo Legion, probably one of the more famous paintings of him. And apparently this is taken of his shadow. So, so this guy right here does not exactly smack of this guy right here. Um, that schnoz, <laughs> you know what I'm and, saying? And there's a few other reasons. Like one is the Salt Lake okay. Tribune is pushing it and oh. I don't trust a single word that that rag, you know, publishes. Like it's not even worth toilet paper, <laughs> oh, you know, it's not even worth the paper it's printed on. So anything the Salt Lake Tribune says, you know, it's, you know, it's you BS. literally, okay. So just be honest. You literally, the fact that the Salt Lake Tribune was pushing the idea that it was him influenced whether you thought it was yeah, him or not. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I, like, I will have to say, the Salt Lake Tribune, it really surprises me. This headline is a lot different and a lot more, uh, I guess, should we say, I don't want to say irresponsibly enthusiastic, but a well, lot okay, more assumptive. What if, what if someone's, you know, doing a conspiracy against us, like, you know, with Mark Hoffman? Like what if what if hypothetically someone has an image of this guy on the right, like where he's at a slave auction or something, or doing something bad? Oh, you mean how Mark Hoffman had actually yeah. originally wanted to write or find, shall we say, the lost hundred and sixteen pages. Mm -hmm. So this would be part of a long con if we could actually say that, oh, look, we've got daguerreotypes of this guy in a compromising situation, uh, maybe, I don't know, superimposed into some crazy polygamist beating up on their children photo or something like that, then uh, it'd be part of a long con. I don't think necessarily the Salt Lake Tribune is uh, part of some kind of long con, but I definitely think it's odd that they're so interested in pushing that there is this photo of Joseph Smith when generally the stuff they publish is against the church. So it's like, well, why would you guys all of a sudden be so enthusiastic about this? So you're saying that enthusiasm yeah, gives you a little suspicious. bit of pause. It's suspicious. It's suspicious. Okay. So they say treasured daguerreotype was found in the descendant's 
Locket, in a descendants locket, Utah-based LDS church, welcomes the news but urges caution until the image can be further authenticated. Yet here is their headline saying, at long last, a photo of Mormon founder Joseph Smith emerges. So it is kind of funny how this is actually considered journalisming, as Ben Shapiro calls it, where literally the headline can state emphatically at long last, a photo of Mormon founder Joseph Smith emerges. And that's the headline. The headline is a statement, a factual statement. This has emerged and is found, which insinuates authentication and insinuates verification and insinuates all those other things that journalists are supposed to do. But then it comments right in the subheading. Okay. It says, Treasured daguerreotype was found in a sentence locket. Utah-based LDS church welcomes news, but urges caution until the image can be further authenticated. And why do we urge caution? Because Dan, the physiognomy man, has gone back on thinking it was Joseph Smith or not. Yeah, the other thing is just physiognomy isn't right. <laughs> it's just not right. It's just Joseph Smith was a very, very sanguine on what you call like jovial person who's very happy. You could even see in this portrait on the left, like this person on the right looks just a little bit, just a little bit too serious. Okay. A so, little bit too, you know, just run like worn down just a little bit too. Like, I just don't picture the guy on the right, like playing around with kids, like playing ball or something. And in, you know, the kids of Nauvoo, like their backyard, like the equivalent of like the Sandlot, but you know, in 1842. Okay, cool. All right, man. So, um, like I said, I, uh, my, my desire stays the same. I want it to be him. I think that would totally be awesome. And I love modern relics. And, uh, I found, um, the only existing 60 millimeter copy of Ngagi in an estate sale in Pennsylvania. That's the 1930 film that was considered a lost film, uh, until I found it. And it's the film that inspired King Kong, the 1933 King Kong, which is um, my favorite film to this day as well. So I love it when just the hand of God reaches into a barn find somewhere, a chest somewhere and pulls out a relic. And there's nothing more exciting than that. And I want it to be Joseph Smith. But um, I also understand that to me, my biggest uh, cause of doubt was this idea that I really doubt there would be image an image floating around for 180 years of Joseph Smith that the family was not keenly aware of. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. You so know, that's why maybe it would be floating around. So the theory that I have is now is maybe it was Samuel Smith and that was floating around forever. And then eventually people forgot what Samuel Smith looked like. Eventually, even later, people forgot exactly what Joseph Smith looked like. And at some point in the 20th century, Someone really didn't know and made the assumption, oh, maybe this is Joseph Smith. Okay, yeah. The uh, the guy on the right looks a little bit more rugged than we'd suppose, and I've heard people go as far as even saying it was Hiram, they believe. That is still a possibility, but I think all of Hiram's stuff went out west. Okay, excellent. All right, so you are now no longer in the camp of, well, even yesterday you were a little bit dubious, mm -hmm. but you're thinking it was Samuel Smith now. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. This is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. See you guys in the next program. Oh, oh, oh.